News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali on TV One. And a very good evening to you and a warm welcome to Newsline Live. My guest today is a member of parliament uh, from the uh, Batikolo area and he's of course Mr. Shana Kin Rasamanikam. Very good evening and welcome to the program. Good evening for us, good evening to you. Thank you very much. Um, why is it so difficult to work towards reconciliation? Let's work towards reconciliation. What's holding us back? Uh, thank you for having me on uh, another Newsline uh, program. It's always great to uh, sit beside you and uh, speak uh, on current affairs in the country. Uh, reconciliation, uh, the word reconciliation uh, means different things for different people. Mm. I think uh, the word reconciliation uh, means something else to the government and the word reconciliation uh, means a different uh, thing to the ones who are uh, who want to reconcile or who want to be uh, part of this country, uh, who want to be Sri Lankans. Um, so it's, a, it's been a challenging uh, few years, uh, challenging more than a decade actually since 2009. Uh, many presidents, I think we are having the fourth executive president in the country, many cabinets, many foreign ministers in charge of foreign affairs, many ministers in charge of justice, However, um, it's unfortunate that uh, reconciliation still stands at uh, where it was in 2009 or even still reconciliation stands at um, where, th where, where the root causes actually started. So we are hopeful uh, as the Tamil National Alliance for us, we are very hopeful mm. and we want to reconcile. We want to live in this country as equal citizens where uh, Tamils also feel uh, that they're you know, it's uh, it's very easy. Some people you see say, you know, forge a Sri Lankan identity, be Sri Lankan. Uh, but uh, in your in places that you live in, uh, that you need to live a life uh, that's not that somebody else wants you to live. That's mm. not real reconciliation. So we are very hopeful that uh, reconciliation will happen. In fact, I'm just coming after uh, a meeting uh, with His Excellency the President. Uh, that included uh, members of Parliament, Tamil members of Parliament from the north and the east. Uh, along with other officials, cabinet ministers, um, chaired by the president. Mm. Um, so, as all as we always do, we as the TNA, we go into discussions uh, with a lot of hope, uh, hoping that uh, you know uh, grievances would be heard and issues will be resolved. Uh, so, it's for me, of course, I'm I'm an MP for the, it's, it's my first term as an MP, but uh, my leader, Mr. Sambandan has been doing this uh, for the last five decades, more than five decades, and uh, mm -hmm. nothing has transpired. So, however, we go for these meetings with a lot of hope. We've put forward all our uh, requests, and they're very, um, uh, how would I say, they're very, they're, they're requests that, that are not um, too hard to uh, fulfill. Mm -hmm. So we are very hopeful uh, that the president would take uh, the right decision and actually work towards reconciliation as opposed to uh, dragging this on or wasting time. So we hope the president is sincere in his efforts uh, to reconcile. But, and that's the whole point, isn't it? Um, uh, you, you're, you representing the people of the Northeast, um, you all have um, pretty good intentions and you're trying your best. But what's the level of commitment you're receiving from the other side, from the government? Because surely, after so long, uh, it must be frustrating in the extreme to the people of these areas uh, who are uh, deprived of many things, including opportunity and uh, a half-decent uh, way of life. Well, uh, you see, economy re issues related to economic issues, say issues relating to job opportunities or opportunities or... Um, quality of life, cost of living, these are very common problems that all Sri Lankans face. But there are very unique problems that uh, people in the North and these face, uh, especially uh, there are mothers of the missing people 
uh, enforced disappeared people um, who are still on the streets for over 3,000, almost uh, three, they're nearing almost 3,000 days demanding justice. They want to know what happened to their son who was handed over to the army during the last stages of the war. So reconciliation doesn't mean that uh, the government can give them a death certificate and say, okay, you know, you handed over your son. We don't know what happened to your son. Move on. No, that's not going to work. But uh, what, what, what do you want them to say? What, what can they say? There have been various, uh, various commissions, uh, Lessons Learned and Reconciliation Commission, yeah. Parnagama Commission. Now very, uh, uh, very recent in our president's talking about the Truth and Reconciliation Commission uh, following the South Africa model. The problem is the mothers of the missing people or the relatives of the missing people, the relatives of the forced, enforced disappeared people, on their agenda, justice and the truth is uh, right on top. They want to know what happened to their children. So any real... Some of those children have been taken away by the LTT. It doesn't matter. We are saying enforced disappeared. So if the LTT has taken them or any other paramilitary group, as if Pullian has taken, if Douglas the one has taken, it doesn't matter. Mm. The mothers don't, mothers are demanding for justice. There are very specific cases where the mother says, at this check army point, this uh, uh, division yeah. took over my son and they got them on a bus. So yeah. they have very direct questions. They want to know what happened to their children. So, and but the governments. Think, who do you think will but, have the answers, well, the real answers? Which is precisely why we need to have investigations that we need to start. So the invest it's been 14 years and there's, we are not. We can't be satisfied with the investigations that have happened. I mean, the Office of Missing People were there and they, they, they on their cell, on their part, admitted that they have been very slow. So, so ever since the... Ever let, me, let me finish, the, yeah. let me finish the, the, finish the entire point. So the government's point of view, the government's point of view is we saw uh, Minister Ali Sabri when he was uh, Minister in Charge of Justice was went to Jaffna and said, we will issue you death certificates and we will give you a compensation of 100,000 rupees. The life of one child to the mother was 100,000 rupees and a death certificate. Whereas the mothers want to say, mother said, you know, hell with your 100,000 rupees and your death certificate. If you're saying my son is dead, if you're saying my daughter is dead, how did my son die? How did my daughter die? Where is the truth? If there is, if there is evidence, you need to investigate. So, but the problem here is that even the Truth and Reconciliation Commission that we're talking about, Unless there is some sort of foreign involvement, like a third party, like foreign judges or foreign uh, over, over, overseers or some sort of foreign oversight, I don't think the victim community is going to accept it because they have lost faith. Because, and I don't blame them. Mm. 14 years if you couldn't deliver. Um, you see, is, again, we had President Ranil Vikram Singh was the prime minister at the time. It was his cabinet. So it's not like we are giving president a new, new it's not a new person who's going to try again. So these answers, would I'm just giving you one example of how different the issues in the north and the east are to uh, issues in the south. Look at land issues. We spoke about the archaeology department uh, just a little while ago with the president. Whilst we are meeting the president and having discussions with archaeological uh, department related issues, this morning two Hindu priests were arrested for uh, entering a place of worship that uh, Hindus have used for uh, the last uh, few hundred years and they have been arrested and they have been uh, they have been arrested today on the only crime they've committed is to enter the premises to uh, follow their religious observances and there is a court case that allows them to go there and a few days ago we saw minister sarat virasekara was present at that site the minister in charge of archaeology vidro vikram nayaka leads uh, some, uh, leads a group of people army mostly and he destroys a hindu temple shrine and uh, now we have a Buddhist uh, temple built on that particular site. So how are we going to speak to convince our people that the government's genuine, uh, these efforts are genuine when it comes to reconciliation, uh, when uh, these sort of things on the ground are still taking place? I hear that there's some monks have come from Thailand or Vietnam. They are going mm -hmm. to go to Trincomalee on Sunday and they are going to do some, some, car, some during 300, 300 uh, uh, sorry, some 2,500 years ago or 2,000 years ago, some uh, puja had happened and they want to do the, uh, recreate the same thing in a land where there is a dispute with the archaeology department, where the Hindus uh, and the archaeology department had a conflict. So they are going to go ahead with that on Sunday, whilst we are here in the pres at the presidential secretariat today, talking about to rec uh, how we can reconcile. So the j efforts have to be genuine for us. <coughs> would you, would you place the blame firmly on uh, the Rajapaksas because 
Uh, from 2005 to 2015, we had the Rajapaksas. The war or the hostilities finished in 2009 inside their term. And then we had uh, uh, President Sirisena and Rani Wickramasinghe for about four years thereafter. Um, and then we had another Rajapaksa. So are we blaming the Rajapaksas? I'm blaming... And they, today, they're still in control. I'm blaming the Serenayakas, the Bandaranayakas, the Rajapakshas, the Sirisenas, the Vikramasinghas, the whole lot. Hmm. The whole lot that has governed this country for 75 years. I'm blaming everyone for where we are today. And the Rajapakshas have a larger part to play in it. Hmm. But uh, the fundamental idea of racism hmm. uh, was there with uh, the Serenayakas and the, Raj, uh, the Bandaranayakas at the beginning. They were the... They, they, the root causes were created mm. uh, in the 50s and the 60s and they just, the Rajapakshas has championed racism and took it to another level mm. of racism and uh, had absolutely no care for human rights or uh, democracy and just, uh, you know, nepotism and there was, you know, we can give, go on about mm. uh, the mistakes and the atrocities of the Rajapakshas but very, like you very precisely said, today, uh, majority in parliament uh, still... Uh, is with the Sri Lanka Pujana Piramuna and um, that is no secret. So, uh, but we could have at least the people of this country would have had an opportunity to show their displeasure towards the Rajapakshas or to show that the country has changed if mm. the local council elections had happened. But that has also been, uh, uh, you know, just indefinitely postponed. So, uh, I wouldn't just blame the Rajapakshas, but Yes, the Rajapakshas should take majority of the responsibility. So, in that case, in that whole, in that ambience, um, and in that sort of theory, is um, Rani Vikramasinghe merely a proxy then, and can't act on his own? Well, with but he uh, can. Well, um, you know, we need to give Rani Vikramasinghe uh, the credit today. For uh, in fact, uh, however long it has taken uh, uh, with the IMF agreement. Ranil Vikramasinghe has been able to uh, actually um, complete the IMF and uh, reach a staff level agreement or get access to the uh, extended fund facility. And also, um, you see there, in, in, in terms of a, a common man, um, you see there, the, the queues are less. People are actually, you know, okay with that. But we have to, we have to give him that credit. But at the same time, this is not what a long-term solution. Yeah, what credit can we give him uh, towards working uh, at reconciliation? Well, like I said, the efforts are being put in place, but is he genuine is the question because there is a... How could he be genuine if he is being backed by the Rajapaksas? We, just said, we were just talking about them. Well, for us, we have to, we have to look at it uh, from a very broader uh, prospect. The Rajapakshas, if the Rajapakshas are fully uh, backing him, uh, which I think they are, which mm. I think because the Pohotua government is fully backing him, so that's a proxy of the Rajapakshas, um, there, there may not even be a discussion for reconciliation. Maybe. I mean, I mean this is anybody's guess. Mm. But when there is a discussion, when there is an opportunity for reconciliation, we need to give it our 100%. That is my position. That is my view. So if the president is genuine or not, if he's going to deliver this or not, is he going to be able to deliver or not, mm. we still have to participate in any of the discussions because that is what our people sent us to uh, parliament. That's the mandate that our people gave us. But let me, let me finish about why I said uh, we must give some credit to the president. Mm. Even though we give credit to the president, there are many things that the president could do differently. Mm. You see, even with the taxation, the president has president and the policies of the government have burdened so many, uh, so many individuals, whereas we have proposed so many mechanisms. I think the pay tax, um, uh, so rather the tax, uh, withholding tax, yeah. tax on withholding tax interest uh, income. Hold on, let me say that again. Yeah. Uh, withholding tax on interest income yeah. alone. Yeah. Uh, if we change, if we change it from five percent to ten percent. We get this equivalent of the same equivalent of money that we get through uh, that pay pay tax that where almost 11, uh, 11 lakhs people, yeah, one point one million people are paying. So, yeah. if we increase our excise tax to the proper levels, mm. we can have the state revenue can increase by so much more. So there are many things that we actually have been pointing out that can be done differently, mm. but at the same time we can't 
there has to be some sort of uh, constructive criticism as well is what I feel. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Asimanikum. On that note, let's go for a short break in which we take a peek at tonight's headlines from the news first primetime news team. We'll see you on the other side of the break with Shanakin Rasamanikam. News first news line with Faraz Shaukat Ali on TV One. Sri Lanka will not support any action that hinders the unity of Asia. President stresses. Activist Piat Nikeshala and Deputy Mayor of the Kadavila Municipal Council Chandika Ratna granted bail. Court case filed by ship owners to limit the compensation claim for the Express Pearl disaster disregarded. Anurakumar Bisanayaka alleges. International Monetary Fund staff team arrives in Sri Lanka. Sumandiran's Provincial Council's Election Amendment Bill gazetted. If not passed, old electoral system to be followed in Provincial Council elections. News First, News Faraz Shaukat Ali on TV One. And welcome back to Newsline Live. I'm in conversation with the Member of Parliament from the Batikra District, Shanakian Rasamanikam, and we're talking, let's work towards reconciliation. Now then, you know these talks you've had with the President today, uh, I believe it's going on for, going to have... One more day. One Tomorrow. more day. Um, what are the nitty-gritties you're talking about? Well, uh, today was mostly about uh, land issues mm -hmm. and the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, uh, the new proposed ATA or and repealing the PTA, mm. uh, issues of the missing people, which we've already discussed, and the release yeah. of uh, the political prisoners. Yeah. Uh, land issues took most of the time uh, because there are many issues uh, that are uh, in the north and the east. Um, so, see, these, these, some of these things we feel that the president can immediately use his executive power to uh, change these things. But when we put that forward to the president, the president said that he needs to have a, a system in place and he doesn't want to take haphazard decisions. Now, this is what the president said. Mm. So, we have, I yesterday, in fact, in parliament, I said this as well. If anybody mm. thinks that the TNA and the Tamil people can be taken for a ride uh, just so that they could uh, score, mm. just so that they could show the international community that they're trying to resolve just so, so that they can um, show the world mm. uh, that, uh, that you know, they're sincere in these efforts uh, but, and, and lead us on for a little while. And then the, this is what normally happens. You yeah. know, discussions start, you know, we, we put our proposals, our people are hopeful, and then these go on for a little while. And then, you know, as soon as uh, and, uh, it's time for elections, all these things are forgotten. So if anybody feels, including the president himself, that this again that this can be done we are very 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 um we are very 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 uh we believe we believe that we cannot allow that to happen this time and our, pe our people will not get fooled one more time because how do you convert this thing you get you get so close you know you you awarded the uh, the penalty kick it's, and then then the ball's taken off well basically we are not the ones driving it mm. all we can do is we can put forward our grievances we can we can provide solutions, but we are not the ones to implement them. But that's the case with most things in Sri Lanka. There are many laws that we don't implement. So this time around, uh, we are not going to blindly wait for months and uh, years uh, for this to happen. If these talks don't work out, uh, we will call the bluff straight away and we will tell our people that uh, we've been cheated. So if the president is sincere, we hope he is, uh, he could deliver on some of these land issues immediately. Uh, and then we can work on uh, work on a system mm. so that this doesn't happen again. So tomorrow is an even more important discussion. It's about devolution for the entire country, how power can be devolved to develop Sri Lanka as a country, not just for the north and the east. Mm. So we are, we are going to participate in these talks. But if the president feels that he can drag these discussions on till, you know, a president's election and then say, look, you know, I didn't have enough time, elect me one more time and then I will deliver this. I don't think uh, you know our people will uh, uh, approve of that. Or I don't think our people will be happy mm. uh, to do that. So because there's enough time, and 
actual results can be produced in this short period of time. Uh, in these discussions, are they perfectly honest with you, uh, with, with, the, uh, with your representatives, and are they saying to you, look, you can talk about anything else, but if you're talking about lands occupied by the military, we need them, we're not going to discuss. Are they upfront and open about that? Uh, land, so is it, are you talking about my constituents? Or yes, you, your constituents, any, any land that is uh, being occupied now by the military and usually I've had a uh, defence secretary on my programme who said, look, that's not negotiable. We will not give up those yeah. lands. Well, how can someone not release your private land? Yeah, but if they say for security reasons, we now identify that we need that land there. So, for us, there could be specific, there could be one or two isolated places, isolated cases, yeah. uh, where there could be, even though I don't approve of it, uh, it's private land is private land. Mm. Uh, you know, th th that is, these sort of policies is what has brought Sri Lanka to this uh, place. There are schools. So some of these army camps, there's one in Batiklo in uh, Morakatan, Chennai, uh, almost a 10 acre plot of land, mm. where the army does not even use uh, more than one acre. But mm -hmm. you know, the, the school, the premises of the school uh, is still under the army's occupation. There's a post office. I mean, these are very simple things. There, this is, there's a post office in Batiklo, where the army refuses to give uh, two or three purchases of the camp that's behind the post office, that's a state post office, to build a toilet. See, so the army cannot think that they, you know, that they own this country and that it's, uh, that they could do anything that they want. If there's private land, there has to be the Is there a mechanism to, for someone to be the arbiter? The army says we need this for security reasons. Uh, for the for the you know the for the rest of the country as well for everyone, and and uh, the other side says no, it's not. It's just you're only putting a toilet in there. So for us, I think as an island, um, you know, we need maritime security. We need to protect our coast. If there's anything that needs to be strengthened, I would say it should be a navy that should be strengthened. Mm -hmm. uh, since the end of the war, our, our numbers have increased. The military. Uh, number of uh, military uh, person has increased. We are the only country where, after a war, where we have uh, almost increased by 100,000. So mm. we need to downsize the army. The army's expenditure, the defense budget is the largest budget in this country. God knows what happens to that budget. Um, there are many camps that actually don't serve a purpose right now. Uh, and these, are, these don't cause any sort of national security threats either, uh, as per the assessment of many experts. So I think even today uh, we raise some of these issues and uh, we are hoping to discuss these issues. So our position is that, you know, that land that belongs to the people, if it could be a sports ground, it could be a school, mm. it could be a divisional secretary's office. Yeah. These need to be handed back to the people. You know, we need to reduce, we need a large, we need to reduce our mil numbers in the military significantly because Have it's we burdening. that aspect with the president? The reduction of the military yeah. personnel, no, because that's not uh, that's not a matter that just concerns the North and the East. That's a matter of national interest. But reducing, rather releasing lands that the army is occupying, yeah, definitely there are three thousand acres of land that belong to the people that are that are still declared as a high security zone mm. where people are denied access. They 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 are paddy lands. There are lands where there are houses. So this is that is that is not acceptable. So I ho I, ho I hope that the defense secretary who said that has now at least changed his position, mm. that, that, that it, it is negotiable. Mm. Because otherwise there is no reconciliation. How can you reconcile when you, if I'm taking your land and I'm using, I'm not even using that land, I'm just holding it on, hold on holding on to it because I can. Would you think uh, when you, you would want to reconcile? When you have a peaceful moment, have you thought to yourself, what is the rationale? Why are they doing this? Well, it's because the, the, since the end of the war, like we discussed, there has been no real reconciliation. Mahindra Rajapaksha, as soon as he finished the war, the first thing he did was go for elections because he knew he could ride on uh, the victory of the war. And since then, this country has been idolizing the war victory. Uh, you know, way, way back, back uh, when I first came into parliament, every speaker in parliament will speak a few words about the war, about how Gotha was the biggest, you know, Defence Secretary won the war, Rata Virua or Ra Rana Virua, all this, uh, yeah. all this uh, jazz used to be the rhetoric that was there. Any this guy, it could be a debate about fisheries, it could be a debate about children. It would start and end with the winning the war and crushing 
uh, you know, the Tamil Tigers yeah. or, you know, how the president has ruled the country with iron fist, all that. Now it's Aragalia. As soon as someone gets up, Aragalia did that, Aragalia did this. Now, so there is a rhetoric. So from 2009 up until 2015, it was the, the war mindset, that the war victory mindset was what uh, helped people do politics. And then into after the Easter Sunday attacks, which I still feel have not, the proper investigations haven't, ha haven't happened. And I think that was engineered for somebody's uh, gain. Uh, since then, again, it was national security. You know, Jati Karaksha was the main uh, topic. So, um, these are the reasons. So, if these holding on to these lands, this whole narrative of, you know, this, uh, we need to hold on to this land because otherwise the LTT is going to come back, the LTT is going to regroup, all these, these, these sort of rhetoric has been published and this, these have been given to the masses in, in, in such a big, in a massive scale mm. that, uh, you know, people have voted for this. Now, even there are some monks uh, who come and say, mm. just very recently, uh, there are some, uh, uh, some, some very, 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 very uh, controversial monk, I can't remember his name, he said something uh, to the effect of uh, some simple law. If this law is passed, Uthurunagan uh, hearing, all the Sinhala people will have to leave overnight. Some, it, it had no relevance to the North and the East at all, but just to, just to pump people up and say, you know, this North and East is a problem. So, this entire Tamil issue has been used as a boogeyman in this country. And we just want to yeah. live in peace. We just want to be equal citizens. We just want the same amount of political power that everyone enjoys. And uh, that's it. We, we don't, we, we're not asking, we're not fighting for a separate country. Uh, th thank you very much, by the way, for all your questions. Um, we, we, so most of these questions are reverting back uh, to uh, what you said about the president, that the president has done, achieved certain things. Uh, he's uh, managing uh, the sort of mismanaged parts of it. Uh, fuel is there. Okay, it's, it's sort of rationed, but it's there and there are no queues and so on. Um, so does that mean that he's, uh, he's the answer? That'll, that'll, be, that'll be something I could answer uh, once the reconciliation efforts are done. <laughs> With no reconciliation, there's no one. No one's the right choice. And, and and this president, do you think, if he uh, if he uh, resolves the reconciliation issue, um, at least to some extent, do you think he'll have a nice, easy ride towards re-election? Well, if the reconciliation issue is resolved, that will resolve the economic crisis to a certain extent. Large amount of investments we will, as a TNA. We can bring in a large uh, sum of investments into the country, mm. and if the economy is revived and there's a um, uh, reconciliation, will bring economic recovery. And if both are uh, resolved, uh, whoever resolves that will have a decent uh, chance. Is what I feel. Question from Rat Milana, uh, asking you, um, what about compensation for the lands uh, being occupied by the military? Well, it's, it's a matter that should be decided by those people. Now, in fact. I have a land that belongs to me. I think in 2013, that land probably is worth, uh, at that time, let's say, just rough numbers, let's say the land was worth 100,000 rupees a perch. The government offered me 1,300 rupees per perch. So, you know, compensation, the valuations, uh, you know, it's just, it's the, the owner of the land. It could be a land that belonged to him for 500 years. You know, does he want to give it just so that some man's ego, so the military's ego, so the defense secretary, whoever who said this, mm. so his ego could be satisfied. If it's a real uh, strategic location and, you know, those can be discussed. We're not saying, um, you know, places of strategic importance, you know, should be completely overlooked. But yes, if there's, there's a case or two, we can look at them separately. But overall, the policy must be taken that people's land must be returned. As we come to the end, uh, Mr. Rasman, let me, let me ask you this question. Will there be reconciliation. Will the people of the former conflict areas and elsewhere in this country, will it, will it happen, let's say, in your lifetime? Well, I'm hopeful that it will happen and I'm hopeful uh, that it will happen soon and we are working towards it. We are working towards it positively. Uh, we are, we are we're not criticizing uh, every single thing. We are constructive. We are giving constructive criticism to achieve this reconciliation. 
because reconciliation is like you mentioned it's not just for the north and the east of the people who are from the war affected areas reconciliation will transform the lives of 22 million sri lankans in this country so i'm hoping that it will happen faster uh, than uh, we all want it to happen uh, mr asman we all rather faster than we all think it will happen this yes. uh, mr asmanikum thank you very much and uh, we wish you all the very best in uh, working towards uh, real reconciliation and that's the way it was on uh, newsline live with uh, shanakin rasmanikum this evening take care have a great uh, have a great evening and of course god bless you all